Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of our playthrough of the game Tyranny. So let's see here. We have got some flashing icons here, one with Verse and one with Lantry. So let's speak to Miss Verse here. So, the Scarlet Chorus and Disfavored are at each other's throats. <laughs> Can't say I didn't see that coming, but the Archons might have waited until one war was over before they started another. Do you think I made the right decision? Fighting with the disfavored. Well, not the call I would have made, but I'm sure you have your reasons. If you like iron weapons or something about that purple uniform excites you, then be my guest. Actually, it is something about that purple uniform that excites me. I love the purple uniform, so thanks. Who can say? War is all about compromising your morals, deciding who lives and dies. What seems like a mistake turns into your greatest call down the road. Let me make one thing clear, just so that there aren't any misunderstandings. You support Graven Ash, and I couldn't care less. I'm here because you've done what none of the Archons could. Not even the voices of Narat would fault me that. That's all I wanted to know. He's also a complete bastard, and I wouldn't want to miss an opportunity to stab him in the gut and take control of his army. So, there's that. Oh, Verse. You are perfect. Yeah, I mean, if we kill him, you can take control of the army. I don't go crap. It's all yours. I'll say this much. Our time together is anything but dull. My blades are yours for as long as you'll have me. Ah, let's be off then. That was good. I like that. That was a good talk. All right, Mr. Laundry. Let's see what you got, bud. So, your latest acquisition has me thinking about the spires some more. By all accounts, they go as far back as the old walls. Over the centuries, the nobles of the Tears have claimed the spires, but they've only ever battled over the land at the ground level of the monuments. I've never seen the glyphs of a spire light up in all my years. Not until you show up. If this were an isolated incident, I'd be confused. But it seems the spires, plural, are somehow connected to you. What's your secret? I've studied at Tunian's feet, I've proclaimed edicts, and I've also broken them. I'm sure I've been exposed to all sorts of arcane powers. I always want to know what you're thinking. If I had the words for it, I'd share. I'm just... Uh, not sure what to make of it. I'm realizing how much more there is to learn. Uh, let's get going then. Alright, let's see. So we need to continue moving north, right? We've got enemies. Oh, no, 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 no. Get away, get away, get away. What is that? Skyblade? Get in front, Malaise. Alright, Sunder that target. Right. Alright, Barrack. Try this new attack on this thing. You can fire arrow her, Miss Verse. And Laundry. Just go ahead and dart him, and then immediately after, cast your heal on Malaise. I will aid you. Stun dazed, wounded. Oh my lord, look at him go. Wow, that is so powerful. Smash to pieces! Unbroken wrath ability, corrosive aura. Well, there's another campfire. Corrosive aura, huh? Let's look at that. So it was from the unbroken? Wrath, corrosive aura, passive. Enemies near you have their armor reduced by one in a three meter radius once every three seconds. Automatically. That's nice. Oh, well, let's loot all this stuff then. I have to move this huge rock, huh? Well, as you should be able to do it. 35 athletics or a pole? Do your athletic. Here we go. Alright, Malay, 
engaged, get in front. Eric, you're there to prevent them from charging past. First, get in the wide open area. All right, before we go, let's buff up. Increase our armor. Give Barrack increased uh, strength. Increase uh, everybody's damage. And give Malaise a spell to make him not die or get healed automatically, I should say, when he gets low health. Malaise, you don't really have any buffs to cast yours on yourself. First, cast the buff on Malaise to let him dodge. Healing spell, and we go. I got it. Hold. I don't recognize you. Are you with the unbroken? I don't know who you are, but I've come to water this heart soil. Oh, wow. Look at Malaise engaging both these targets at once. I love it. Alright. Um, well, before even Sunder, actually. Root this target and reduce his stats, and then drain his strength. Looks like you can hit both these targets, can I? I can hit both of them. Same thing with this. And then cast your Sunder spell after that, I guess. Uh, verse, Fire Arrow, the Skyblade, and then Fire Ball, the Skyblade. And Landry, you can use your dart on the Skyblade. Barrack, intercept this guy and use everything you got on him. Save him at the end, Alright, now use your powerful attack. Let's have it! Malaise attack. Look at that. Go ahead and Sunder, bud. Sunder, yeah, that target, that's fine. Alright, Lancer, use your spell to stun all three of these. Looks like it's 66% uh, on the middle, 70% on the left, and 58% on the right. Verse, keep attacking your target, you're doing really well. Eric, you're doing great also, just keep beating on that guy from behind. 45 damage. Good hit, Verse, just stun a couple of them. Now use Quicken. <laughs> Everyone goes nuts. Barrack, keep targeting that. Malaise, keep finding who you are. Actually, use this spell to steal these two health. Verse, keep fighting. Lantry, help fight. That's how it's done. Dart him. Consider it done. Fight, Malaise, fight. Use your spell. First fight. Can't do that. Alright, target down, fight. Verse, use your fire arrow. Lantry, go ahead and heal Malaise, even though it doesn't really need I'll take care. Malaise, sunder this target. Will do. I've got you now! My weapon swings are so slow. Alright, subterfuge. That wasn't so hard. What is this? A one-handed weapon? A 1% bonus damage for every 1% missing health? Hmm. Gives me 1.25 seconds off my recovery. I lose armor, penetration, and damage. You know what? That might actually be worth it. Because my weapon is just so freaking slow. I think I'm going to just go back to... I'm going to use the axe with Varric. And let's see. I know she's got two weapons. Yeah, give me that one. So Mr. Malay's here. Let's see. 
what do I get the difference between dagger and this? So if I take out the sword, it's slower, it loses accuracy, but it gets armor pen and damn it. But what about the axe? gives me damage and armor pen. The spear gives me damage, range, and armor pen. The sword gives me armor pen and damage. So in that regards, I guess the axe is the best. So I'm going to keep using that. I'll give first the spear and the dagger and give Varric the sword and the shield. Sorry, I can't. Let's go out this way now. Oh, yeah, it's a campfire. You see what I see? Yeah. Well done. Do you have eyes on this? Another one there, huh? Interesting. Our septifuge shield just keeps going up and up as well. Lots of traps. Okay. Before we go any further, let's stop. Moving forward just a little bit. Alright, Mr. Lantry, let's get your spells going. Same thing as always. And when you cast your heal, malaise will go in. Sorry, I can't do that. Mr. Malay. I'm not here to make Barrack. Use your strong skill on this guy and then use your other skill after. First use your fire arrow and then use your fireball after. And use your dart, Mr. Landry. Uh. Alright, now fight. God, Barrack's a monster. Wait, why do you have a certain shield up? No, no, no. There you go. That's a You got it. Oh, gosh. Eric, slow down, bud. Light on my head here. Except if you Wow, this is where the original casting of the Edicts of the Storms was. Here we go, this is it. Alright, before we go in, never mind. We could take these ironclads. If they're as dense and clues on as ar clueless as our Archon, they should fall like splintered masts. Reinforcements approaching. Good to see you here, Fightbinder. Time to cleanse Rust Canyon of the unbroken taint. They won't leave these canyons alive. My men are ready to die, and we're only too happy to take down as many of you as possible. 
I have a spear destined for your right eye whenever you feel like embracing the void. To Jacobus, Gravenarch protects. Let's kill this one and take the region for the Archon. For the Archon, Eric snaps to salute and readies himself for the fight. Yes, we will honor Ash and his family with our conquest in his name. Prepare yourself for the void, Miss Krant. Pitiful zealots. The Archon doesn't value your lives any more than I do, so dive on my hand and spare yourselves the disappointment. Alright, let's see what have we got. Got a guaranteed ambush, I bet. Malay's running and use your skill to sunder Amelia. To battle! Alright, she wants to run. Yeah, okay. Use your sender skill on him then. Barrack, run in and engage this target, the Sky Vla Use your fire arrow verse on the Sky Vla Lantry, use your spell to heal Malaise if he takes too much damage. Alright, right, verse, simply attack this target because it's about to get ripped to pieces by you and Barrack. Literally injured already. Alright, Malays, good job. Alright, now you're gonna use your two spells back to back to reduce their stats and root them and give you more buffs. Make you tougher. At least I think so. Do I have to actually like click on somebody? Why wouldn't it cast? There we go. Alright, now they're in there is an engaging guy. Eric, turn and attack this target. And it has a shield, so use your strong attack. Verse, use your fireball on this one. Malaise, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Lantry, get up close. Alright, time for some quickening. Alright, you continue to just tear that apart. Verse is going to assist you, Barry. Alright, Malays, use your Sunder. Actually, no. Use your spell to root them on this target. I got you now! Go ahead and heal Malays. Concern done! And then cast your buff to make everyone stronger. And then cast the vitality buff on Malays, and then increase the archer and barracks damage. Honest. Attacking. Use your spell to heal yourself. It's a hit. Got you now. All right. Go ahead and send right. ah! Eric, turn and attack the girl with two-handed sword. Use your strong attack. Malaise, use your thrust on this attacker's closest attacker. And use your fire arrow on this attacker, Miss Verse. Lantry, use your dart on this enemy. I will aid you. Oh. Alright, now use your spell to stun all of them. 70% chance on one. Alright, Verse, keep attacking Barrack's target. Actually, fireball that target right there. Should no hit dice. all three of them. What do you mean, no dice? Alright, that target. You got it. So it looks like you have to have a target. Alright, Malaise. Use it on that target and stun them all. Uh. Barrack, you go ahead and use this on this target. Lantry, heal Malaise. Uh. Uh. Your stun. No. Malays attack this target. I'm actually, still in health for. First, help attack. Malays attack. Barrack attack. First, no. alright, this is Lantry. You can attack. Malays, you sunder. On her, she's almost done. Barrack attack. Verse finisher. Will do. Ah! Everyone, no. 
So she fell there. <laughs> Still alive? Shit. That wasn't part of the plan. I'm not telling you anything. My secrets, they come with me to the grave. You can always find more creative ways of extracting information. Now that we've thrown a spear into their scavenging plans, we can afford to take our time. Just kill me and be done with it. We both know I won't bow to torture. You're only wasting your time. Hmm. You're just an obstruction in my path. I need to reach Sentinel Stand. You... I don't suppose you're trying to break the edict, are you? No one will go to Sentinel Stand unless they want the, the Regent. Maybe I had you picked all wrong. What do you want to know? Don't expect to hold these wounds closed. You're on borrowed time. How do I get to the local spire? There's no direct road, but the breach in the old walls is said to the leash to the ocean spire's floor. If you're dead set on making the journey, you'll come across worse foes than the unbroken. Who leads snow? What do you know about Ash's daughter? Who? I'm not the business of breaking up families. That's Kuros's domain. Outside of Rust Canyons and Iron Hearth, the only ironclads I know of are in Duskwatch. But you'd have taken them already, wouldn't you, bastard? You're looking for an artifact, right? Aye. And we've been searching for some time. A fool's errand, perhaps. Suppose I'll never know for sure. We... We were hunting for the remains of Regent Aspison. Before the war, he carried the steadfast insignia, a cloakpin that was passed down the line of First Regents. What did you learn about... What is the steadfast insignia? It's a cloakpin. I don't know if it works, but I can't think of any odd shitter than the windfall around Sentinel Stand. What did you learn about the Regent? We were looking for the body of First Regent Aspison, who was presumed dead during the war. We said we found records of his past movements. The final word on the matter is that he journeyed to the breach in the old walls and never returned. I'm not sure what he was doing in there unless he wanted to unleash the bane against the disfavored somehow. Dumb shit. We sent a small team led by one of our best, Gregos, to investigate. Like as not the steadfast insignia is there, it's in the breach. Maybe you'll never find it. How did a breach form in the old walls? Maybe we've had a little preoccupied with you, northern fuckers, to waste our time patrolling the length of the country. So excuse me if I've been shady on the detail. My best guess? Either the Edict of Storms blasted a hole in the ancient stone or something blasted its way out. Does either option help you sleep better at night? I thought not. Who leads the Unbroken? Matthias was our captain during the war, but in Stour to come, I could see him take on a higher authority. Looks like those brighter days aren't like for the likes of me. Last I heard, he was rounding up men in Trapper's Junction, but that was some time ago. He was due to leave by now. He was looking for Dauntless, the sort of unbroken champions. He thought they could rally us, give us hope. better to me as a prisoner than a corpse. She's obviously pretty intelligent. Hmm. Unfortunately, I have no intention of going quietly or continuing to further your sick goals, so fuck off. Snatching a shard of rusted iron, she lashes out, taking several desperate and capable swings at you. She doesn't stop this frenzied, relentless assault until you drive a blade through her chest and pin her corpse to the ground of her homeland. So, so dies a daughter of fallen Starwart. Good wait, Fightbinder. I'll regroup with Theodore and secure Rust Canyons for the disfavored. What is these? Thorns? The reagent of an elite Starwart captain is decked with spikes that intimidate combatants against getting too close. When critically hit, does damage to the enemy. A patrol map. Some heavy boots. They look like they might be better than what we got. 
Not to see. So the armor on that iron guard armor is... Oh, it's iron, that's why, and this is only brawn. Duh. Will do. I like how the different metals have different stats and different things like that. So going from iron to bronze, it's there's just no comparison. I can loot, right? Oh, am I just reading that incorrectly? Oh well. So let's see here, what have we got? Well, you know, before I travel too much further, I like to kind of sell and rest and everything, so I'm gonna go to the Mountain Spire. Two and a half days away. first. That gives rid of all our wounds as well as giving us a huge bonus to all our skills. Let's see what you have in stock. Alright, so let's sell first. sell these just in case. Get rid of those. Alright, my pen. So we've got the scythe, which is identical to the axe I have, huh? There's this bow. I can afford the bow now, barely, but I can. And it's better than the one I have. Increased damage and increased accuracy. I think it's gonna be worth it. Now the bow... You know, I wonder... I already got a bow. I probably don't need a second one. It was worth 20 for me. The staff that Lantry have is awesome. I don't really like the armor that this provides. I mean, it gives thorns, but now yeah, it's okay, so I'll get rid of it. And this is, what, light armor? Leather? How about... Oh, okay, well, that's what I see you there. That bow she's got is pretty awesome. She says she sees him, huh? Alright, so what have we got? We got some stuff that she can look at, possibly. What is this? Heavy Iron Curious. Okay. No, I like the one I got. Alright, so Miss Verse, how about helmets? The one you have is better because it has sharp. What about boots? Oh, these are heavy boots. What about these boots? No. Nope. What about these boots? Oh, I like how they look. And then it's hard to tell with the boots because I lose crushing and corrode, but I gain piercing and shock, so it's kind of eh eh. So, let's say max out those potions. Lantry's potions max, her potions max. Ah, uh, here you go. And we'll hold the rest here. Alright, 
get down. Oh, we got another missive on the subject of the spires. Alright, malaise. My apologies. After all these years about my lectures about the fittest goat being the first to get eaten, how can I expect honesty when I have fostered only paranoia? So let me speak plainly. I am asking only for my own curiosity, and because I want to hear the answers from you. Lie to me or dodge the questions if it pleases you, but I'm trying to help. Of course, someday soon, I'm sure Tunyon or Blendon Mark will ask me or Calio to mount a more proper investigation into your actions. Should that happen, it won't be with your best interest at heart and lives will merely sign your death warrant. For the moment, I'm merely curious about the events surrounding the claiming of the Spire and hoping to hear it from you as a friend and peer. Share with me your experience and I will share with you what knowledge I have. Fatebinder Roglis. It's another Fatebinder? Oh. Alright. I'm going to explain. Dear Roglius, Kiros's edict simply said that an agent of the Overlord must claim a session hall before Kiros's day of swords. The only thing I consciously did was take charge of the battle to claim a session hall. My claiming of the spire happened just moments after I felt the edict's grip release. The floor of a session hall gave way, unearthing a glowing pattern buried beneath the chamber floor. Kiros only knows how long it's been buried under the tile. As for how I actually claim the spire, it is perhaps a mutual bond. Atop the spire is an old structure, a twin-tined edifice. I'll include a sketch on the back of the parchment. This structure spoke to me in, in sensations and images, and it seems to respond to my presence in some limited capacity. That is what happened, as best as I can think to describe it. Does any of this sound familiar, or bring to mind any old stories or rumors? Send it. All right. So we've rested, we've sold, we've bought things. All right, did we buy things? Can't he craft things? Um, oh, it's at the other one, huh? Let's see if I go to the other, where's the other tower at? Oh, Sunset Spire. I can instantly teleport over there. And I think this one has something that I can... Like as a uh, smithing plate. Let's look at the blacksmith plate. Select a weapon to upgrade. I can afford to. I can upgrade it to masterwork. But in order to do that, I need 10 bronze ingots. Okay, I've got 6 bronze. 3, so it's keeping these. Oh, okay, perfect. That's really nice. Alright, so I don't want to upgrade anything. I don't want to talk to him though. Forge something for me. Alright, so I got these artifacts. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's so good. The commander's plate, bronze armor. Not enough money? Can't afford that, even that. Recruits need a forge one. More workers? Oh, maybe at the spire itself. Let's see this one. Forge. Which spire am I at? Vengeance Well or 
Lathian's Crossing. I think I'm at Lathian's Crossing. Merchant who specializes in light armor, medium armor. Smith who provides bronze ingots to upgrade weapons and forge powerful items. Oh well, give me bronze ingots and ironing it. Oh, they're so expensive though. Unique weapon. Control vigor, control stone. Control fire, control frost, control lightning, and control vigor. Huh. Specializes in light armor, metal armor. Next time you travel to the forge, you'll have a person. Hmm. I'm gonna get the person who gives bronze ingots. And then I'm going to sell. Why can I not sell? Oh, I can forge things now. Plus five to all magical skills. There's lightning damage. What is Sentinel? A two-handed sword? Sorcerer's Blade. Pride of the Forgotten. Reduced. Oh, only Bear can use it. That's still really nice. The Nightwalker boots. Huh. Commander's Plate is one of those. Okay, well, I'll have to go back. Can you talk to both of these people again? Our gang is building quite a little collection of spires, aren't we? The voice of the rat was never one for keeping strongholds, but I can definitely see the appeal. What do you think of the spires? They're big, but make no mistake, a determined army could knock one down if they got enough shovels and picks together. Don't be so quick to assume that you're invincible. As to what they are, I'll try not to ask those questions. Why doesn't the voices like strongholds? Because there's no point in standing still. The voices prefers to keep his forces busy and on the move, with the only restful hours between dusk and dawn. Besides, fighters' emotions are less likely to rise up and challenge authority, safety in numbers. But once you get people hunkered down to discuss their problems, suddenly everyone has a reason to kill the closest gang boss. I have what do you need? For you. Have either of you noticed that you fight particularly well together, to bear a converse? The thought has crossed my mind from time to time. During the many battles of the Conquest, we found ourselves standing back to back with enemies on all sides, on more than one occasion. The big guy here is as useless as an empty scabbard without his phalanx to keep him alive, but I move fast enough to compensate for it. And it's nice having a living wall of rusted iron I can use for cover. I want you two to train together. Absolutely not. Our fighting styles are incompatible, and any disfavored lieutenant will tell you not to join at the hip soldiers who can't stomach each other. I'm inclined to agree. If you want to pair up fighters, there has to be some great passion or magnetism between them. We don't have it. Alright, I guess if neither of you is up to the challenge, then I won't force the matter. Now see here, versus temperament and unpredictable ways are an annoyance. But no challenge is beyond my skill. Verse, we should take some time to face off in the sparring fields. It might even improve our disposition towards one another. I'd rather watch you devour your armor one shaved off spoonful at a time. But since that isn't going to happen anytime soon, I suppose I'll make an effort. Ooh, Barrack and Verse have gained a new combo ability? Oh, this game just keeps getting better and better. Alright, what'd you get, Mr. Barrack? Arrow Storm. Verse fires several arrows into Barrack's armor. When the last arrow strikes, Barrack roars and the arrows burst out, striking nearby enemies. Are you kidding? 
Stand together! I'm... I'm blown away. <laughs> this is amazing, I love it. Alright, who else needs a top? Uh, laundry. Let's talk. At least in theory, I'm supposed to be observing history and not getting myself wrapped into it. All the same, this is the thrill of a lifetime. Rarely does one stand so close to monumental moments in the making. If given the choice between a multifaceted hive mind of treachery and a surly old soldier, General Grumps is the wiser choice. It's patently obvious which Archon is truly loyal to Kairos. So, I must ask, are you planning on taking sides in the Civil War? Or do you have other plans? Hmm... I think that this is a big, wild, crazy, dangerous place, and having an ally is definitely helpful. But deceit is also a bound, so I don't want to commit myself completely to anything. So, I'm going to stick with the most powerful force that I'm aligned with right now, which is I am a servant of the Archon of Justice. That much has not changed. Dutifully spoken. It is Tunan's duty to arbitrate matters between the Archons, so this rift between Ash and Narat certainly falls under his jurisdiction. And here you are, thrust in the middle of the dispute. No doubt the mighty adjudicator will be relying heavily on you to get to the truth of the matter. Whatever you do next, consider that many eyes will be upon you, for you have both delivered and taken away the Overlord's edicts, and few will know how to make sense of the latter. You are an exception the Archons cannot afford to ignore. They will likely aim to control or destroy you. Have a moment, let's talk further. I have some questions for you. I am nothing if not a semi-reliable font of knowledge. Uh, what did you want to discuss? What can you tell me about the School of Ink and Quill? You mean what's left of them? <sighs> what would you like to know? What sort of sigils do the sages practice? Traditionally, we use magic only so that we may observe and archive. So that means magic of concealment and protection. But, in truth, we have amassed a great wealth of knowledge. Before the Vellum Citadel fell, any given subject of magic had at least one sage practicing it. So you're admitting you had at least one agent of yours studying the magic of the Tidecasters? Well, I mean... We... If such information had fallen into our hands generations ago, we'd be fools not to... Not to suckle off that ill-gotten teat of knowledge? Filthy word whores of the worst degree. The Edict of Fire wasn't half of what you deserved. Oh, okay. I can see this conversation is going to end in very constructive places. Both of you, drop it. <sighs> what would you like to know? That's all for now. Alright, so on that note, I, I got think it. it's a good place. Wait, did my formation get messed up? No, it didn't. Alright, so I think that's a great place for us to stop this episode. And I would like to thank everybody who stuck with us through the entire thing. And I hope to see you in the next one as we continue our adventures throughout the world. Thanks again, and bye.